Yay! Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Hi. We are here to have a conversation about triggers. And I invited my friend, Karenna, from Hello Inner Light. She's actually one of my friends, but also has been a teacher of mine and a um, healer that I've gone to. And we've just known each other for a while now. So we love a lot of the same things. And so we were going to talk about triggers today. Tell yeah. me, just introduce yourself a little bit and what's what's been yeah. going on with you. Okay. Well, thank you for having me, Macy. Yeah. And yeah, like you said, I'm Karenna with Hello in Your Light. And I am an emotional health coach, a trauma-informed emotional health coach. So I utilize emotional processing tools. I am certified in a couple of them uh, that really help people go beneath the surface of their conscious mind to get to the roots of their struggle. Because when you heal the roots of your struggle in the subconscious and in the, your cells, in your body, um, that can be incredibly transformative. So that is my specialty is really compassionately holding space for people to go deep into the parts of their psyche that are really longing to be heard, longing to be healed, longing to be integrated. Yes, we both share that. I love it. And you have many tools, but let's just start with the, the trigger thing. I think it's kind of interesting to know what is a trigger? Yeah. And how do you even know you're in one? Well, sometimes we don't know we're in one until hindsight, because it's a full body experience usually that kind of takes over. Oftentimes it's feeling upset, feeling anxious, feeling fearful. Um, do we have a little echo going on? Should I? I'm not sure. If there's I don't hear okay. it. Okay. Oh, is it on you? Okay, cool. Um, so anyway, so yeah, sometimes we don't know because we're just experiencing it. We just get so wrapped up in the upset or so wrapped up in the feeling in our body that is uncomfortable that our brain will escape into either avoidance or rationalization or something. But in hindsight, we can often determine that we had what might be considered a disproportionate reaction. You know, like that we we reacted in a bigger way um, than might be appropriate for the situation. Or sometimes it's not that it's an inappropriate reaction, you know, like we're all triggered right now, I feel like politically and societally. And so if you're feeling triggered, lots of rage, lots of fear, you know, that kind of stuff, it's not that that's an inappropriate reaction in any way. Um but it is uh, a reaction that you want to know how to get conscious of and how to deal with, how to integrate. And I also see triggers as really important messengers on our self-healing journey because they tell us what we really care about and what we really value. And they tell us about our limiting beliefs and they tell us about our subconscious blocks and the unprocessed emotions in our psyche. So they're amazing messengers from the internal world of our body and our subconscious. Um, so even though they're really uncomfortable and we might not always recognize them when we're in them, they are deeply valuable messengers from our subconscious. Wow. So what ways do we get those messages? Well, so oftentimes it starts in the body. Like everything we think about our brains, you know, we identify with our conscious self, we have our narratives, we have our rationalizations, and we mostly come from our conscious mind. But most of our um, current neuroscience says that 95% of our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors comes from our subconscious. So oftentimes triggers and most of our mot motivations and emotions come from a sensation in our body, which then secondarily our brain starts to give a story to or give meaning to, but oftentimes they start in the body. And so in um, my emotional processing work that I do, we start with the body as well. We start with really starting to feel the triggers just as body sensations. So we can start to separate from the conscious narrative a little bit because whether the conscious narrative is true or not, because sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't, it often will just keep us spiraling 
in the trigger. And so the way that I work with them is I bring people out of their conscious mind more into their body so that we can begin to hear the deeper messages embedded in the triggers. Yeah. So would you say that once you get the message from the triggers, then it's no longer a trigger anymore? Is that yeah. usually the case? Well, yeah, it depends. So if it's like, if you're feeling triggered around a really deep core issue that you've had for a lot of your life, um, then it may not be cleared just in one or two times of, you know, working with your trigger. But every single time that you hear the message from your subconscious psyche, you hear the message from your body, you get to step in a, to a little bit more wholeness and a little bit more integration, a lot more self-understanding. Um, usually self-compassion is part of this process too. So um, like just for example, one of the reasons I'm so passionate about this is that I lived my life for like 30 years, just anxious, 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 super self-judgmental. You know, like I had an inner critic that just wouldn't quit. And um, I could go into a shame spiral so quickly that I avoided social situations um, and that sort of a thing. And so I kind of feel like I was triggered all the time, <laughs> you know, like it was really a lot. And it took me going beneath my conscious mind into my subconscious to heal and integrate that. Um, so, yeah, so that's what I do with my clients. That's why I'm so passionate about it, because even though triggers are super uncomfortable, they're really loud for a reason. And the reason is, is that parts of your subconscious psyche are calling out for attention, calling out for love, calling out for support. Right. I love that. I mean, I know that you and I both studied regenerating images and memory, and that's one of yeah. the things that you'll be doing in your, your free training. And yeah. What I love about that is that in the way you just described it, it even reinforces it even more, the, the idea that it um, there is a message that wants to come out and that our body knows what to do. And our body is calling our attention for a reason. And it's it knows that. I mean, your class is called the secret wisdom of your triggers because our body has that wisdom, right? Yeah. That's what I tell people is that your subconscious and your body, it holds the wounds that need healing. It holds the unprocessed things. It doesn't want to hold that. It just does. You know what I mean? Like it's not doing it maliciously. It's because those things need to be processed and integrated, but it also holds your deepest wisdom. It holds oftentimes big inner wisdom that goes beyond any of those things that I've mentioned. So in our subconscious are these beautiful gifts, this beautiful knowing of exactly how to move through it that we just need to learn how to listen to, you know, and the wounds. It's all kind of held in there. There's there's a, a deep connection with your authentic self when you can dive into your subconscious and start to integrate and process some of these wounds. Yeah. So what what did you notice and what other situations or examples can you give for people that they might be um, experiencing a trigger with? Because I know it can be family stuff. It can be old relationship stuff. It can be mm -hmm. even like having a car accident or something that creates a trigger within. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's just use a relationship example since that's your specialty. Yeah. Um, so what often happens in a trigger is that let's say that I am in a relationship and I had a lot of core wounding about feeling abandoned when I was a child, right? So I may not identify consciously with that core wound of feeling abandoned. I don't know, you know, like most people I work with actually have a lot of consciousness about what their core wounds are because they're oftentimes people who have processed a lot, but it doesn't matter whether you have conscious awareness of it or not. Um, let's say I'm in an argument with my partner and they start to withdraw right? Maybe they're just, maybe that's what they need for self-care or whatever. Um, so if you get triggered, what happens is that past feeling of being abandoned as a child just kind of takes over. And we're not sitting there like, oh, I think my inner child feels triggered around my wound of abandonment. It just feels real. Like I'm going to be alone. I'm, I'm afraid. I am, I feel unloved. You know, like those feelings that we had as a child just flood in. 
And so that's really what being triggered is. It's kind of like the past is just seeping in to the present. Um, and we unknowingly go into a feeling state that represents what we felt as a child or what we felt at our most vulnerable moments or some, you know, traumatizing moments, whether it's like a big T trauma or even just a relational sort of, you know, upsetting situation. It doesn't have to be big T traumas. And so, um, your body is just flooding you with these old feelings and the past is seeping into the present. And then you see the present through your wound. You see it through the abandonment wound and the familiar stories around that will come up, right? We all have kind of familiar cycles of stories. So with abandonment in a relationship, it might be like, I'm unlovable, you know, and if they leave me, I will not survive or, you know, what I, whatever it is, you know, it's kind of personal for each person. Um, so yeah, that's an example of being triggered in a relationship and we feel it and we live in it until we can hear it and take care of it and process it. Because in that moment, what um, is really happening is that inner child part is like, help, this is so scary. And if you can just hear that inner child part, love that inner child part, and most of our inner child lives in our subconscious, you know, um, then that inner child part can be soothed and then you can deal with like, oh, my partner needs to withdraw for their own good, right? And it's a whole right. different thing. Or maybe like, I need to communicate to my partner that the way they withdrew was pretty inappropriate in my eyes, you know, or something like that. But it's a whole different story when you kind of have your own back, when you're listening to the parts of your psyche yeah. that really need to be heard, you know, and you can lovingly integrate that because then you can see the world through eyes of your higher self, right? Your more like adult self, your authentic self. Um, so yeah, that's, that's an example. That's a common one. Yeah. That's a really good one because it's easy to, if you don't know, and if you're not aware of it, it's easy to then project it onto someone else and blame the other person, especially in relationship to think, oh, well, it's their problem or, mm -hmm. you know, they're not doing the right thing. And oftentimes a lot will change, right? I mean, for me, yeah. I've seen so much when we can do, look at what it is for us yeah. and then do this kind of work. Totally. And I also just kind of want to say that, like, it happens to all of us. Like, we yeah. all get triggered. It's totally normal, totally appropriate. There's nothing wrong with you or broken with you if you do this, right? It's a universal experience. We all want to avoid it and run away and blame the other person. And sometimes the other person's not to blame. And sometimes they are. You know what I mean? It Just because you're triggered doesn't mean that it's your fault and they did bad, right? It just means that right. something within you needs right. to and healing and the external circumstance will have more, you'll have more clarity and power in whatever circumstance it is if you can have your own back. But it doesn't yes. always mean that like they're right, you're wrong exactly. or you know, anything like that. No, I think that is a really good point. I think that once you do have this kind of awareness though you are more empowered and i do i say it all the time with my clients like to have your own back is where then it's almost soothing in itself to know that and whatever it is that's calling your attention it's almost like the opposite of a desire it's like a desire if we think of desires as our destiny triggers our opportunities for evolution evolving into a greater space for our own personal power. Yeah. And they can tell us about our desires. Like if I'm standing in the way of my own desire because I have some self-limiting beliefs and narratives that just no longer serve me, then I am going to get triggered a lot because I'm standing in the way of my own authentic desire, you know, or someone else's, yeah. you know, because again, it's not always, you know, I'm not into victim blaming or being like every circumstance in your life will be fixed. If you fix your right. triggers, you know what I mean? Cause that's just not realistic. But, um, but yeah, yeah. There's just so much clarity on the other side of the processing and there's so much self-compassion on the other side of dealing with our own wounds that, um, that I found it to be one of the most powerful catalysts 
for healing when we know how to listen to them. You know, they're not catalysts for healing when we just feel awful and we spiral into shame. And, right. you know, then we judge ourselves because we think we're bad and wrong and nobody else mm -hmm. is as bad as, we, you know, like all the things that happen when we're spiraling in a trigger. You know, you have to kind of have some tools and some support to figure out exactly what to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell us about your class then, because that's, it sounds like you'll be offering some of that in this class. Yeah. What will people get? from it? Yeah, well, I do a little experiential exercise at the end. So people get to actually kind of feel into one of their triggers and get to leave a little bit transformed, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I also really talk about what are the mechanisms in the subconscious that cause us to feel triggered? Like what exactly is going on down there? Because we mostly don't understand. And when we start to understand, we can have so much more compassion. And then I also just talk about like the three biggest emotional mistakes that most people are making that are keeping them stuck and spinning, you know, and a lot of them are repression and judgment and that kind of stuff, but we go into it pretty deeply. And then um, I, I give a little exercise. So you get to actually experience within your own body and within your own psyche, um, what it can feel like to get some resolution and to get some processing in a way that we don't really do very often in our culture because our culture is so obsessed with thoughts and thinking and our conscious mind. Um, so yeah, so it's really fun. And I try to keep it as light and empowering as possible because it's actually, it takes a lot of courage to look at your triggers. You know, it's not fun. None of us like pain. We're actually biologically wired to run away from pain, including emotional pain. So it takes a lot of courage to turn towards them. Um, and lovingly say, well, I'm going to look at this, you know, <laughs> so, so there's a lot of just self-compassion in this approach because we're, we're instinctively going to want to run away from our triggers. That's just totally and completely normal. Um, but it takes a lot of courage to turn towards them and it takes a lot of compassion. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of how I try to guide it because I think it's such an important topic to turn towards so important, especially now. And it really is what can keep us from creating and prospering and happiness and connection. And so I'm really glad you're doing this. And for anyone out there who's listening to this, check the little link below because you can sign up for the free training that's coming up. When is it coming up or is it always happening? No, it's happen? happening tomorrow night live okay. at 6.30 Mountain Time and tomorrow okay. is June 29th. But there will also be a replay. So if okay. you can make it live, I mean, I encourage you to come live because then there's that group energy, which is really fun. Yeah. But there is a replay available afterwards. So. Okay. So check it out. And no, I've been in many of Karenna's classes She's a phenomenal facilitator, a phenomenal teacher, and I know that you will be different from taking the class. So check it out, and uh, you can also go to her website because it's hellowinnerlight.com, right? Yep, hellowinnerlight.com. Exactly. You can go check that out and see other things that are coming up or to work with her one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. All right. Thanks for being here. Anything else you want to say before we go? Yeah, I guess the one thing that came to mind that I haven't said already is how empowering it is to know that you can face your triggers and work through them. There is such a deep sense of empowerment that comes from starting to unpack the invisible baggage that you've been carrying around. And I love that. That is one of my favorite pieces of this work. Yeah, I agree. And I'll add, because I think this is important, because if people are already feeling any angst about, I don't know if I can handle that, or I don't think I can face that, what what is pretty amazing about this process is that there's nothing that comes up that can't be seen or heard when it comes up. So there is already that safety measure in there, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, so you can't lose really. 
Um, so thanks for being here. And Thank you for having me, Macy. We'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.